At the start of the episode, the detectives learn that Yun Ran was already dead before alternate Jin Woo attempted to murder her. What's more shocking is that she was killed in the same manner as the serial killer's victims, with one of Mina's mother's stolen necklaces around her neck. At the police station, Mark questions Jin Woo about the black SUV he saw on the night that Kyung Hee disappeared. He tells him that it's Jin Woo's choice whether to live in a world where he kills people or a world where he saves people. In the original world, alternate Mark makes his way back to his hospital room, where Young Min is waiting with the file of this world's Mark's father's death. The file confirms that he died on April 8, 2008. Alternate Mark recalls that night, but in his version, he'd saved his father from being hit by the car. He did, however, get a good look at the driver's left hand, which had a large black discolored spot on the back. He assumes that the driver who hit and killed his father in this world must be the same person who committed the murder. As he's being led to the prison, Jin Woo hears a hum that sounds exactly like the humming driver he saw the night of Kai and He's kidnapping. He hadn't seen the driver's face, but his left hand had been on the steering wheel, showing a black discoloration on the back. Jin Woo then sees that the hummer has the same dark marking on his left hand. Meanwhile, Yi Hayek briefs Mark on the background of alternate Young Ran. She'd received a large insurance settlement when Mina's father was murdered, which she'd invested wisely. Thus, she was a well-established person in this world. Yi Hayek says that her son Sungwook is on his way to the station. Jin Woo borrows a phone to call Mark and tells him that he just saw the driver that he thinks kidnapped Kai and He. As they're talking, Mark looks up to see this world's version of Sungwook, who is very different from the previous world. Interestingly, there's a black discolored spot on his left hand. Meanwhile, Mina learns that her stepmother died due to asphyxiation, not the blow to the head. A medical examiner shows her the marks on young Ran's throat, and says they were likely made by a necklace, one much thicker than the one that was found on her body. In the police station, Mark follows Sungwook out. He tells Sungwook that he thinks his mother's murder might be part of a serial murder case and that a witness told him the killer had a leg injury. Sunwok, who is also having a leg injury, grumpily admits that he hurt his leg a few days ago. Mark then asks him if he ever drives a larger car, like a black SUV it is the same car that Jin Woo reported having seen on the night of Kai and He's kidnapping. In the meantime, Director Oh is looking for Mark's father as requested by him. She's found where he is staying and goes to see him but he doesn't answer when she knocks on the door. It's not locked, so she goes in and finds him on the floor in a pool of blood. In the next scene, Mina confesses that her stepmother had come to visit her a few days ago. Young Ran had asked her to come live with her for a few days. It had offended Mina, so Young Ran admitted that she was scared of Sunwok. Mina says that she talked to Young Ran's housekeeper, who said that Sunwok lost a lot of money gambling. And when Young Ran stopped giving him money, he started getting aggressive. Mark says that if Sunwook is the killer it makes sense that Young Ran's body was left in the house. She had to be found and her death registered in order for Sunwook to get his inheritance. Nina says that if Sunwook is the killer, then he'll have the rest of her mother's jewelry. Also, Sunwook does happen to own a black SUV. In a flashback, we see him slowly following women around at night, and that he had purposely slammed into Kai and he then offered to take her to the hospital. That night, he takes the SUV to a junkyard and pays the owner to destroy it. Thankfully, Mark had Yi Hayek follow Sunwook from the police station. When Sunwook takes off, Yi Hayek seizes the SUV. Next, the vehicle is thoroughly inspected by Young Min's team, and a fingerprint is found belonging to Lee Jai Young, the fifth body that was dumped in the original world. Inside the car, Mina finds a key to a gym locker room. They check out the gym, and inside the locker is a duffel bag containing a hammer covered in blood, and a box with the rest of Mina's mother's missing jewelry. This makes Sunwook the number one suspect. Meanwhile, Director Oh rushes Mark's father to the hospital, and learns that he is suffering from a terminal illness. Back in the station, Yi Hayek brings Mark a report of the other DNA found in Sunwook's vehicle, including Kyan He's. The only person identified that's not on the missing person list is Lee Jai Young. In the original world, alternate Mark visits Sunwook in jail, and angrily accuses him of murdering Mina's father, then killing his own father with his car. Sunwook starts repeating that he didn't do it. In a flashback, we see that Sunwook was driving the car from the house after killing Mina's father, only he wasn't alone. His companion had urged him to run over Mark's father, saying that he was a witness. Sunwook had cried that his companion did the killing, not him, but he'd still hit Mark's father by accident. Alternate Mark then staggers back to the hospital and raids the pharmacy for drugs. Just as he's about to inject himself, someone comes in. He runs and ends up at the empty Mukyong station just as it begins to rain. The rain reminds him of a picture he was shown at the prison that Sunwook drew. It depicted a man wearing a baseball cap, 
bent over Mina's father's dead body. Alternate Mark recalls seeing the second man in the vehicle with Sungwook the day Mina's father was murdered, and that man was wearing a baseball cap. Just then, the old clock registers at 9.35 p.m., and the train warning starts to ring. In the alternate world, Mark is upset when he finds out that Mina went to an old marketplace to look for Sungwook alone. He heads there, telling Yi Hayek and Junyum to follow him. While they're still on their way, Mina is attacked by Sungwook, who tightens something around her neck. Mina manages to get the upper hand and points a gun to his forehead, and says that she didn't come to catch him, but to kill him. Sunwook changes his tune, swearing that he didn't kill her father, and Mina shoots. Having finally avenged her father's death, Mina begins to get emotional. Mark arrives at the scene to wrap his arms around her. They turn around to find that Sunwook's body is gone. They split up to look for him and Mark gets a call from an alternate Mark who says that Sunwook is just the real killer's accomplice. He urges Mark to catch Sunwook and make him confess the real killer's identity. Behind Mark, something falls from the sky. Mark turns, and he sees Sunwook's body on top of the now-smashed car. It turns out Yi Hayek had cornered Sunwook on the roof, and Sunwook pleaded his innocence. He held up a silver necklace, saying that it was proof that he didn't kill anyone. He then had a flashback on the night of Mina's father's murder. He'd cowered in a corner while the killer strangled the father, and then bashed his head with a hammer. Snapping back to the present, a fearful Sunwook kept backing closer to the edge of the roof, landing on the car below. Mark is back at the office when he learns that Sunwook isn't dead. He's in the hospital undergoing surgery. Sunwook suffered a bad head injury when he fell. Later, Mina tells Mark that Sungwook is a lefty. She adds that the autopsy on Young Ran showed that her killer used his right hand to swing the hammer, and if the killer were Sungwook, he wouldn't have been able to accurately strike the same spot multiple times with his right hand. Knowing that alternate Mark agrees that Sungwook was merely an accomplice, Mark says they will look into it further. Director O calls Mark into her office, and gives him a card for a nursing home and tells him that his father is in the end stages of liver disease, and doesn't have much time left. Once outside, Mark is forcibly slammed against his car by alternate Mark, who snarls that he's finally home. He asks if Mark caught Sungwook, but Mark asks what he meant that Sungwook is just the real killer's accomplice. Both Marks then head to the train tracks to talk. They figure out that the worlds were split that night 12 years ago when Mark turned to give Mina his umbrella but alternate Mark ignored her. The delay resulted in Mark's father being hit by the car and dying, but alternate Mark made it to his dad in time to save his life. Alt Mark tells Mark that Sunwook wasn't alone in the car that night, so whoever was with him must be the killer. He says that it's time for Mark to go back to his own world and let alternate Mark catch the killer. Meanwhile, Yi Hayek and Mina go through a box of things that were found in Young Ran's safe. Inside the safe were Lee Jai Young's and Kai and He's wallets, which means that on some level, Young Ran must have known what Sung Wook was doing. Inside Jai Young's wallet, Yi Hayek finds a business card for Park T. Kai Young from Jang He Foods. He assumes that he's someone Jai Young knew, and tells Jun Young to call him. In the next scene, Mark visits his father in the nursing home. He promises his father that he will catch the real culprit. Mina joins in and she apologizes for blaming the father for the murder. Once outside, Mark tells Mina that on the night her father died, someone saw a second person in the car with Sung Wook, and that he believes the other person is the killer. Next, the detectives start by asking Sung Wook's classmates. They find one guy who remembers Sung Wook. He had witnessed some bullies beating up Sung Wook, and a boy from a different school had accidentally bumped into one of the bullies. The bully slapped the student. Out of anger, he beat up the bully and the witness recalls that he was wearing an unusual necklace. Meanwhile, alternate Mark looks through Sunwook's file, and recalls that the second person in the car was wearing the necklace. It's the same necklace that Sunwook was holding when he fell off the roof. He then goes to the police station to get the necklace from the evidence room. He also sees a green pill. Next, Mina suggests they have Mark's father hypnotized to make him remember the memory of that dreadful night. Later, she calls her psychiatrist Dr. Siok, and he agrees to hypnotize Mark's father tomorrow. The next day, Dr. Seol, Mina, and Mark go to the nursing home. Mark's father is hypnotized, and as he travels backward in his memories, he remembers going back to the house to get the phone he left there. Suddenly, someone hit him over the head. He hadn't been able to see his attacker's face clearly, but he does recall that he'd tripped over a prescription bottle as he fled. In the meantime, alternate Mark has the green pill analyzed. It's a drug used to treat Huntington's disease, which causes loss of motor control, delusions, and memory loss. The pharmacist says that it's a rare disease and that only about a hundred people in the country suffer from it. Alternate Mark then orders him to put together a list of patients. Back in the nursing home, 
Dr. Siak is still with Mark's father after his hypnosis, and he shows him the empty jewelry box he got from Mina at the murder scene. Hearing the tinkling music clarifies the father's memory until he can remember the killer's face, and it's Dr. Siak. When Mark and Mina return, Dr. Siak says that the father is sleeping after taking some painkillers. The duo leaves because Sungwok has woken up. Dr. Siak also leaves and pulls off onto a small deserted road. He thinks about his last conversation with Sungwok. In a flashback, we see that Sungwook had asked why Dr. Siak planted that evidence, which Mina and Mark had found in his locker. He had threatened to go to the police and tell them everything. But Dr. Siak had smirked that he had no proof. He'd left the room, and when he returned, he'd realized that Sungwook had stolen his necklace from his desk. At the hospital, Mark and Mina are told that Sungwook will survive, but that his head injury may leave him with the cognitive abilities of a young child. Meanwhile, Dr. Siak returns to the nursing home. As he's about to inject the father with drugs and kill him, his hand starts shaking violently. The father wakes up and sees Dr. Siak, so he leaps out of bed and runs, calling for help. Elsewhere, alternate Mark gets the list of people with Huntington's disease. He sees a name on it that shocks him. It's Dr. Siak. When he goes to the nursing home, he realizes that his father isn't there. He then calls Mark, letting him know the situation. Alternate Mark runs down the street, Calling for his father, he finally finds his father in the middle of the road. But a vehicle barrels down on them, hitting them both at full speed. By the time the original Mark reaches the scene, both his father and alternate Mark are dead. But he doesn't know that he was not the first person there. In a flashback, we see that Dr. Siak was there first, and he'd found his missing necklace on the pavement next to alternate Mark. Dr. Siak had strangled alternate Mark to death, then left the scene when he heard Mark coming. Nina arrives moments after Mark, and she clearly sees both marks, one dead and one still very much alive. Later in the morgue, Mina and Yung Min run the fingerprint of the dead Mark, confirming he is Mark. But that's nothing compared to the shock of seeing another Mark alive. And well as he enters the morgue, Mina slams Mark against the wall and demands to know who he really is. And he says that he is the dead CO Mark. And the dead CO Mark is him. He runs his own fingerprint and gets the exact same result as when Mina ran the body's print. He's also CO Mark. He has no choice but to tell the women that he's from another world that split off from this one 12 years ago. And that on rainy nights at 9.35 pm, train 8210 runs between the Mukyung stations in both worlds. He tells them that the killer uses the two worlds to cover up his murders by dumping the bodies from this world into his world. Later at Mark's father's funeral, Dr. Siak pays a visit. He is surprised to see Mark alive, as he had strangled him the other night. It turns out the doctor doesn't know that this is the Mark from the original world. The shock triggers his Huntington's tremor so that he has to switch hands to light incense. Mark leaves with Hee Hayek and Jun Young when they get a call that the cops found the hit and run driver, whose vehicle barreled down alternate Mark and his father. It turns out to be Park T. Kion, who Mark knows as the sex offender that he was chasing on the night he found the bodies at Mukyum Station in the original world. T. Kion starts sobbing the name of Lee Jae Young, who was his girlfriend in this world until she went missing. She is the fifth victim whose body showed up in Mark's world. Ki Kaim swears he didn't kill the father and son as he had gone back to check the victims, and had seen someone strangling one of the people he hit, though he hadn't seen his face. Mark then goes to the morgue where he meets Yoon Min and has her check alternate Mark's body. They find that there are strangulation marks on the throat. He tells Yoon Min that the only person who would do this is someone who wants to cover up the case from 12 years ago. He says that then and now, it's all connected to the real killer. Back in her office, Mina looks over her mother's jewelry and realizes that one piece is still missing. At the police station, the team goes over what they know about the suspected serial murder victims. Mark realizes that they all went missing near their homes, which means the killer must have known a little about their personal lives. Based on the other information they've gathered on the killer, Mark says that he probably has a white-collar job and suffers from a rare illness. Just then, Kyung Hee's daughter arrives to collect her mother's belongings, and she's distraught that her mother's body hasn't been found yet. Mark notices a small bag of medicine in Kyung Hee's purse, and her daughter explains that the medicine was for a panic disorder. Mark asks Yi Hayek to check if any of the other missing victims were taking psychoactive drugs. Yi Hayek reports later that all the victims saw the same psychiatrist Dr. Siak. Meanwhile, Mark goes to the lab to ask about the results of a DNA test he ordered to compare a clipping of alternate Mark's fingernail to Dr. Siak's sweat from the incense stick from his father's funeral. The lab worker informs that it's a match to the DNA Dr. Siak left on the incense. Mark immediately calls Yi Hayek and tells him to trace Dr. Siak's phone. 
He follows the moving tracer and ends up at an art gallery, where Dr. Siak is waiting in an empty room. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like and comment if you think we should make the next part. Thank you.